Okay, we're back. This is where we ended on this particular slide. Hypovolemic shock, what values go up to compensate? Let's go back one just to be okay. The first question, we're looking at the different shocks and seeing how we can put them together. Okay, hypovolemic shock, what goes down in the MAP formula to drop the blood pressure? We said EDV. EDV went down. Okay. Then we came and we said, well, what would go up to do it? Well, one thing, heart rate could increase. Another thing would be a stronger left ventricle squeeze. If you have a stronger left ventricle squeeze, there would be less in the tank, a stronger inotropic, and also vasoconstriction. That would come in. Now, as we, as we glance back, let's start, let's look at it this way, okay? So you have hypovolemic. Let's say you got cut. How would it be signal that the blood pressure was going down? Well, think about it. That would be the carotid and aortic barrel receptors. They would signal that. What would they then do? They would send the signal, if it's the carotids, they would send it via the glossopharyngeal nerve. Go back and study. If it's the aortic, they would send it via the central vagus, let's say, to the cardiac center. What would happen in the cardiac center? The cardiac acceleratory center would get kicked in. Cardiac acceleratory center works via the sympathetic nervous system. What would then happen? The sympathetic nervous system, which exits the cord at the thoracolumbar, would exit at T1, T2, T3, T4, a little bit of T5, forming the cardiac plexus. That would then go to the heart. It would go to the SA and AV node. The SA and AV node, particularly the SA, would speed the heart up. The neurotransmitter would be norepinephrine. It would be sitting on a beta-1 receptor. That would speed the heart up. Then, some of it goes to the general myocardium in the heart. Go back and review. That would cause the heart to squeeze harder. Norepinephrine on a beta-1 receptor on cardiac muscle would cause it to squeeze hard. Okay. The receptors would also send signals to the vasomotor center. The vasoconstrictor center, which also works via the sympathetic, would send norepinephrine to alpha receptors on blood vessels, which would cause vasoconstriction. Additionally, the drop in blood pressure would be picked up by the by the renin angiotensin system. How, Mike? Because the drop in pressure would be picked up by the kidneys. The kidneys would increase the production of renin. Renin then would convert angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. Converting enzyme would convert it to, to 2. And angiotensin 2 is a powerful vasoconstrictor. It would also increase aldosterone. Aldosterone would increase the holding of salt, which would hold water. It would also increase ADH, which would hold water, and ADH also acts as a vasoconstrictor. Remember the sympathetic also turns on the adrenal medulla, which would increase epinephrine, which also would work on the receptor. So see how we put it all together? That's how you would get this this increase in heart rate and all of this, the, why these values would help, okay? So now we go, so that's hypovolemic, okay? So we come back over here. All right, let's see what we're going to do here now. So there's some more hypo. Now we're going to cardiogenic shock, okay? Let's go to cardiogenic, okay? Cardiogenic shock. Now, I'm dividing cardiogenic shock into two kinds. One would be an SA node problem, sign of the pacemaker. So let's deal with it from that. And you can read this over here on your own with the PowerPoints. So let's say an SA node problem. Okay. If the SA node had a problem and became dysfunctional, what value goes down as a result of the malfunction of the SA node? Well, 
If the SA node is the pacemaker, if it's the pacemaker, then what would go down would be heart rate. So let's take that as a red. Heart rate would go down. Okay. If heart rate goes down, MAP goes down. Remember, if heart rate goes down, let's put our MAP formula back up. Okay. MAP equals to CO times SVR. So if heart rate goes down, CO goes down. If CO goes down, blood pressure goes down. That would be with a problem of the pacemaker. Okay. So let's go further. If this went down, let's put that map formula back up. Okay. The map formula, MAP equals to CO times SVR. So if CO went down, we'll put that in red. If, if this went down because the heart rate went down, what can compensate? Okay. One thing that could happen is you could have a harder squeeze again. Okay. But one thing, well, let's start here. One thing you could increase the fluid volume. You could pull, pull some fluid from outside the blood vessels to inside the blood vessels. Now that would give me something. So EDV, let's say, could go up. ESV could go down. A harder squeeze. ESV. So EDV up. And ESV down. See, ESV going down means a harder squeeze, which would then increase stroke volume to compensate for a drop in heart rate. Increase stroke volume to compensate for a drop in heart rate. Okay, what else could happen? Vasoconstriction. Let's put that in green. Vasoconstriction. That vasoconstriction then could lead to an increase in SVR. What's the mechanism to do that? The same mechanisms we talked about before. The same, the barrel receptors, cardiac center, and so forth. We don't have to do that again. Okay. So that's cardiogenic. All right. Now let's go further. Let's say that this time I'm speaking of cardiogenic, but the SA node is okay. Let's say you have a weak left ventricle. Remember the left ventricle sends to the aorta, the systemic circulation. That's an inotropic problem. Okay, so let's see what would happen now. Weak left ventricle. What would be, what's, what's going to be the, going to cause the problem? Let's come here to ESV. We're going to say, in that case, ESV, ESV goes up because the left ventricle cannot squeeze hard enough. More left in the tank. ventricle. So the key is, I'll put that in red, that this went up, there's more left in that left ventricular tank. Now if that goes up, then there's less of a difference between EDV and ESV, between EDV and ESV which would then cause stroke volume to go down, which would cause stroke volume to go down. So stroke volume has gone down, which has decreased cardiac output. The decrease in cardiac output then, so our map formula, was to CO times 
SVR. So what that has done is to come in now and drop CO. Okay. Let's go further. What could go what would go up to help us? Well, this is what could happen. We could increase heart rate. See? We could increase EDV by pulling more fluid in. Let me make heart rate should have been in green. I apologize. Because that's a helper. So come into green. We could increase EDV. Okay. Now we can't do anything with ESV because that's the culprit. Okay. And we also could increase radi decrease radius, vasoconstriction. So what would happen in this case then would be because ESV went up, weak left ventricle, can't squeeze it hard, can't squeeze as hard, we would have had a drop in SV. But if EDV helps us some, and heart rate helps us some. Heart rate helps us some. And vasoconstriction helps us some. We may be okay to a certain extent. Remember, this is, this is stage one shock compensated. All right. So that's cardiogenic. All right. So over here, you can study a little bit on cardiogenic. See, I'm showing the compensate. So now we're to vasogenic. I'm going to start a, one another video, which will be the last on shot, and we'll pick up vasogenic. Okay, thank you.